Good afternoon. Welcome to Hartwood Turning in the Stable Studio. I'm on time today. Bang on time, I think. I'm confused now. I don't know what to do. Um, what we're going to do today? Introduce the earworms. That's what we'll do first. Uh, not so much earworms today as design consultants. <laughs> if we could get this mouse to work. I really must do something about this mouse beat. There we go, there's the earworms. Look, we've got uh, Joe Senior, who is the Chief yeah. Design Consultant today. It should actually say that on there, Chief Design Consultant. We've got Pete, who's a technical backup. <laughs> and we've got we've got Mark, who's in charge of technical drawing. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> I get to draw. This, this, this is going to go well. Why not? I feel it already. <laughs> <feel it ready. laughs> so, um... You'll, you'll recall, I'll show you this little piece first, this piece. You'll recall this piece that we did on Monday night, this little... Put it in the background. Put it in the background, put that with a better light on it. Yes, dear. Do an idea. What's he out there? Mouse is not working. Get on with it, boy. Any time today. Mouse is not working. What do I keep telling you? My mouse doesn't work half the time. Okay. He's only trying to be disorganised. There we go, the mouse is working. Like, there it is. Put a better light on it. Put a better light on it. Put a different camera. Yeah, it's just looking too dark uh, at the moment. We're a better light. Oh no! What about that? That's better. Dark. That's better. Oh, uh, what about that? Yeah. Who's that? Yeah, that's the one. So it's got that's... kind of. It's got the color is plum. So you can't really see it there, but in in the indentations where I textured it, it's much lighter than it is on the the surface of the texture. If you like, it's quite hard to see on the camera. You'll just have to trust me on that. And these bits, the little texturing bits that I did with the um, Robert Sobby texturing tool, they came out okay as well. So that's actually worked. It's got a nice little bottom on it. And it's nice you hold it down the inside. The size of this piece is five and a quarter inches tall. It's four inches wide at the thickest part. Down there, down there. And the ball thickness is nine mil. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've got a little recess in the top here for a lid. That's what we're going to make today. So the lid. That's the reason I've got these other bits sitting here. I've made a few things with lids. Um different styles, different designs of lid. I like that one so second from the left. This one. Oh, this one. No, that one, yeah. This one. That's nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's the same sort of style of lid. It's the same idea of lid. It just kind of sits down into a recess. And it was textured as well. But the colour didn't turn out very well on that for me. I don't think... That... It, it looks kind of white on the outside there. But it's actually gold. It's got gold texturing on it. Or gold... Um... What do you call that stuff? Embellishing wax. Embellishing wax, that's the one. Oh, yeah, the embellishing wax. That was the, the red embellishing wax. So I've got different styles of lids. That's a fancy lid. It can be used in two different directions. So you've got a floating bowl or a little cornice, if you like. That's just a standard lid because that's supposed to be like a, a honey jar or a biscuit bottle or something. It's just a very simple little lid. So that's just the idea as I was toying with. Uh, this one here is has got a false lid, but it's actually a box in the middle. That's so really looks nice. like looks like this is a lid here, but it's actually well, a simple little box. That was done in 2020. That one. I just looked at the bottom. This is the latest one I've done, which is a it's more of a stopper than a lid. Art Deco sort of style. Stick that over there too. And that, we're finished with that now. And then we'll have a look at this. So let's start by having a look at the piece of wood. There we go. That's what we've got left. That's the rest of the blank that came out of this. So it was mounted with two with a 10 on either end. There we go, the overhead. Just there. Mounted with a, a 10 on either end, so we've got this bit left to make a lid for this. Oh. So I'll leave that over there, and I'll stick the chuck on. 
I'm going to read them out, Joe. Who's in the chat? Yeah, I'll read them out. <coughs> Before you go, Joe. Make yourself, make yeah. yourself Mark, how many everyone. corners do you think this lid should have? How many corners? Yeah. Ooh, I'm thinking six. Six, six yeah, six. Yeah, six corners, corners please, bro. I have no idea how many so corners. There'll be no corners, I'm afraid. Sorry, Joe. Off you go. Oh, then. no, it's okay. That's okay. So, welcome, everybody. And good afternoon. Or morning. Or evening. Wherever you are in the world. So we have Norman Greenwell, Sidri Purposing, Jim You're very Matthew. Technical, isn't it? Pardon? You're getting very technical Copper. today. Yeah, I know. Copper Oil Wood Turning, Clint Head Wood Dancers, Chris Dodds, Brian Eltonero de Madeira, oh, Jacked Up Leatherworks, William Kenny, Craig, Greg Alexander, Amy D'Angeles, Forking Owls. Glencoe Woodworks. Joe, can I just interrupt you a sec? Uh -huh. Can I just take this opportunity to say hello to Brian's knees, please? Well, Brian's knees. <laughs> Brian's knees. Hello, Brian's knees. Brian, Brian's got his shorts on today. And Mark doesn't like them because they're too short, he says, but I love shorts. You've got a lot more like air on your legs than you have on your head, haven't you? Yes, <laughs> that's it. Nice job. <gasps> uh, Stephen Gordon. <laughs> I've lost where I am now. No cut line. That's just for Pete's benefit. Hold on. Paul Hoyton, the Grease yeah. Turner. <laughs> Michelle Higgins. Oh, I'm going to titter at that now. Take, take, take your time, Joe. Take your time. Brian sure Green. Does. I'm going to go to that Green camera. Green Creations. <laughs> Richard Phelan. Ruby Claire. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Aston, I want to make stuff. Paul Finley, wood turning at home. <laughs> Stephen, the wood dudes. William <coughs> Cannon. Bailey Woodworks. Hi, Chris. Roy's the boy. And that is... At the moment, I think that's the end of my list. If I've missed anybody off, I do apologise. But I had to look at some knees. Well, you, my knees. you were distracted by some knees. Or you had some knees knee inflicted on you. Well, it, it, it was Beckett's fault. Mark Beckett's fault. It's always Mark Beckett's fault. It is. Well, my fault he's wearing shorts. <laughs> So what I'm doing now is I'm just setting the inside diameter. So this bit, the inside. Lewis has just come in. Klondike Grassman. Hi, Lewis. Is that the inside or is that the tenon? That's the, the what tenon? What tenon? Well, you have, you have a little tenon on there to sit on that shelf, won't you? Why? Yeah, <laughs> ah, my. So that'll be the tenon, yeah. Oh, okay. That okay? Yeah. We're happy with yeah. that? Yeah. The outside diameter of the rim, the outside diameter, this diameter. So this bit, so where the little step is, is, uh, oh, that's, I've, did that, I've done that wrong. That's the outside. Wait a minute, I need to fix that, because I've marked that up wrong already. It's your fault, Pete. That's why you I should. stopped questioning it. You should have been paying attention there. So I'll just take that back off again. Careful to leave my little center mark in there. So the inside diameter is the inner diameter is 62 mils, so it's 31 mil I'm looking for. 31 is there. So that's the inside diameter. So I can take five mil off of that. And the way I'm going to do that is, I'm just going to use a beading implant tool and take that in by five mil.
I'm just going to leave the line on for a second. So that's five mil, which will sit do right down into the depth of the the hall of form, the vessel, or whatever you want to call that. You think is that five mil? Yes. What do you think? Four, four point eight. Oh yeah, not far away, Mark. It is about four point eight. The question so the next you, question. Girl. Yeah. Lewis. How many spots did Aston go up on your list after the line bowl video? I haven't seen the line bowl video, so I'm going to have to watch it and <gasps> get back to you. I was out and about. Uh, Apparently Roy's the boy got to meet the Hobbit last night. Yep. Ooh. The Hobbit was out and about last night. So we're there. Get back in there. Was he wearing his um, badge? He wearing his badge. <laughs> yeah, he was visiting that. He was visiting the Woodtonning Club, so he was kind of. Now, the depth of the rim from the edge of the rim to the seat is five. Is just under five mil. So I need another five mil for this now. Oh, that's the wrong tool. Beating important tool, which has suddenly become one of my favourite tools. And I'll just leave the line on that as well. Let's have a look, see does that work. Leave that anywhere near close. It's getting a little bit more. So this is the mechanical bit, just to make sure it fits. Everything after this is uh, aesthetic. You can please yourself. What's going to be? Well, I see we've got two tenons form forming there, so we need a mortise to go with them. Want a mortise as well? Yeah. Do you need a mortise? Ben Jammin's in. Good afternoon, Ben. Hi, Ben. So I'm just creeping up in this slowly. Ruby yeah. says it's her favourite tool as well. The beating and palm tool. That's a smashing little tool. Mine's just sharpened to 25 degrees. On both sides. Make the inner ten a little bit smaller now. Because it's bigger than it should be. We're turning by Barry again. Good afternoon, Barry. Hey, Barry. So there's a whole lot of faffing about just Good to afternoon. get this right. David J. Heath, the gopher. <laughs> so <laughs> that's almost that. there. Apparently, Barry from Barry's Wood Creations did his first live demo at the club. He last did. Time. Yep. So now, so now what I've done is I've just taken that in just at a slight angle. So I've angled the tool slightly. So I've got a little bit of a chamfer on that. Rather than it just being a tight uh, 90 degree edge. It's now got a slight chamfer on it. Which should help that. Just like that. Just like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the outside edge of that. Ooh, that was a satisfying little pop when I came off that. So much so you're doing it again. <laughs> it was a satisfying little pop, but I don't want it that tight. Because what I don't want is I don't want to be able to pick it up. I'll just take a little tiny shaving off of that. And that should be the the joint. 
said. It's not a low tape. Pete wants a mortise inside this now, does he? So, so as I can yeah. hold it now. Is that what you want? So well, as I can turn around and I just, just want a mortise in it. You just want a mortise in it now? Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll have a mortise just to suit you, Pete. No, we'll uh, make a mortise we'll just for the fun of it. We'll do saying the beading short parting tool works much better when the hard angle on all four edges on the stem are rounded a little. Works a treat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah if it, uh, for rolling beads and stuff, it does. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. I haven't got around to doing any of that in any of my <coughs> tools yet. There was once a mortise with a design in it. Well, I can do that too. See, I've got this little SC3 chuck or SC2 chuck. And the motors required for that is 40 mil. So if I set my calipers now at 20 mil, and here, well, doing this to please Pete, you know. 20 mil, just put a little mil there. There we go. We can make a little mortise on that. So we use a different tool. This is an ordinary being a pattern tool. Camera. Camera there. Take that down a bit. Just give ourselves a nice sharp edge there. Straight in for now. Here for Barry's Mel. Wood creations is in. So Barry. Barry. Uh, Barry. I go back to my beating and button tool. Finish that off now. Now, Brian, is this piece in spindle orientation? It is. You might just want to say that it's not always recommended to hold a piece that's in spindle orientation with a mortise. It is. Because you have a greater chance of splitting wood out. You, you, do. you can. You're absolutely 100% right, Mark. But I'm going to take the risk because it will just be to finish off the shape. And I'm just going to use this uh, little point tool just to set my mortise on my uh, dovetail. <clears throat> End of the day, you can do 90% of the shape as it's held. Yeah. Yep. Just the last bit of sanding and everything else, that mortise will come in handy for. Put that Maybe I'm going to use my little, my little skew just to finish that off, lift the tool rest up a little bit. So as the edge of the skew, the skew is dead on level, dead on centre, and just finish that edge off. Oops. Got a decoration line down there. Did you notice that? Yeah. So I'll just get I rid of that. You, I think you could dome the mid middle out of that as well, just make it prettier. I'm not doming the inside of it, no. There is a slight dome uh, externally, if you like. It was the last time I tried to dome it out in uh, an inward dome, if you like. I had trouble when I started to do the finial and stuff. After indeed you... there's going to be a finial of any description. See, that's where so, you've got to put a tenon inside it. There's no tenon. <laughs> so let me just check that this fits. Eric Winkler's in. Afternoon, Eric. So that should be fine. We'll go with that. Undo it. So we'll let it go when that needs to go in. Now, we can decorate that. What am I going to decorate that with? Will we put a little spiral on it? Using the Robert Sorby texturing tool. It's kind of over a little bit. Just do that and everything. No, we won't. I'll need a. 
Alan Key just to move that. Oh, look at those legs. What's wrong with my legs? Need a bit of sun to them. Well, that's why they're out, to get a bit of sun. Partly the, but, but, but unfortunately, there's none in my workshop. Just there. So about that angle somewhere. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. We'll see what we get. Jacked up leather works says, glad I found you all before I started my wood turning adventures. <laughs> Adventure adventures is the word. <laughs> Lewis <laughs> says the usual word actually. <laughs> Lewis What did Lewis say? Lewis, next gym day needs to be leg day. <laughs> yeah. you, you leave you leave my legs alone, Lewis. I'm nearly seventy years of age. My legs are doing all right. They carry me about just fine. Roy's asking, what's the what? tattoo? Go on. Speed at 500. I'm just going to make a spiral in the middle here. Just like that. Oh, not that way, this way. That's it. Did you not have that turned the wrong way? Does it look like it, Mark? Is there not a nice little spiral in there? Okay. You can do it on the sharp edge or the other edge. It doesn't quite dig in as much. If you're using a timber that uh, is quite soft, if you use it on that, the, the kind of rounded edge, if you like, it uh, doesn't tear out as much. I have found. Cool. Uh, what do I want now? I want the point tool to make two little lines either side of that now. Well, not either side of it, but just round the outside of it, just to define it. So just there. And I'll put one right out of the edge. Put it there somewhere. Or should I use three lines and burn them? What do you think, Pete? I think so, yeah. Boo. Yes. Boo. Do one in the middle? No, I'll not do one in the middle. I won't upset Mark too much. So there you go. There's a little design feature on the bottom. That makes it, makes you think that somebody's taking their time and thought about it. And, when in reality, I didn't think about it at all until right there now. Now, Roy was asking, what's the tattoo on your leg brain? Uh, it's a, it's a, a dagger with a flower on it. Ah. It's a hangover to when I was in the, in the uh, when I was a member of Her Majesty's Forces. And he used to wear a kilt. So that little dagger came over the top of my socks, a bit like a ski and do. Ski and do, yeah. Yeah. So it looked like a ski and do every time I wore my kilt, and it really, really upset the RSM at the time. <laughs> because other ranks weren't supposed to wear ski and do's. Supposed to be for ah. senior ranks and officers, you see. So that was my little. Um, you rebel, you. My my little rebellious streak there. Yeah, that's what that was. Well, Ben's asking, so Brent, I, where did you get those extra 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 short shorts from? Asking uh, uh, for a they, friend. Yeah, the only shorts I wear, guys. I don't wear long shorts at all. I absolutely detest them. So I'm yeah, green like shorter that. ones. There you go. There's a the little texturing in the bottom. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Right. Pretty. So. Do we need to do anything else with that? Like embellishing wax or anything? Not a chance. We just zoom <laughs> that back out. Yeah. yeah, we're not. We're definitely we're definitely not. So now over to you guys. All right. Right, so I want a six corner square. You're not getting a six corner square. I have no idea how we would even go about making it a square. Well, I, I, I that's what I've got the drawing pad for. Do I not need to have um, six mountain points then? So is it little? At least. Yeah, it's not happening today, Pete. <laughs> it, it, Show us the box do, again. Show us the bottom. Make, it's over here with the box. A round lid. Right, can we have the box with over cam attached to the lid? Getting all dusty. There you go. That's what it looks like. Okay, I would be inclined. Remember, this is five and a half inches. 
or five and a quarter inches there. So you I'd be inclined to continue the line of the box um, for another <coughs> half, half an inch mm -hmm. and then round it over and put a finiob on it. A finiob, right? Let's 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 just let's just go with Pete's idea for now. Let's just... Unless Mark has a better suggestion, we're going to carry on this this line here, something like that. Somebody suggested a Hershey's kiss. For those that don't know, that's what a Hershey's kiss looks like. I have no idea what Hershey's kiss kiss looks like. Hold on. Oh, oh, no. Sort of. Uh, oh right, okay. Yeah. Ah uh, yes. Oh, so so that's almost Me like too, an Indian, Jim. like an Indian. Yes, so, like yeah. on, a, on, on um, one of them minaret things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a little pointy thing. But do we want, still want this half inch good drawing, up eh? continue? Hey, good drawing, Mark. Yeah. Excellent, Mark. Um, <laughs> okay, so for that, what you'd need to do is you'd need to start me off screen. out at the junction point. So you. So I'm just, so you've I'm got doing... a straight junction. If you had a curved junction, it would work better. All right. So, so what I so... would be inclined is cut that half an inch or a quarter of an inch, and go continue the line inwards, but then curve it back out from there into the minaret yeah. type shape. Okay. So let's just take, let's just take a bit. That will be move. your hold point to lift would, the lid off as will well. Will you take me off screen, please, Brian? Oh, sorry. I keep forgetting. I just thought I'd leave Mark on there to annoy you. <laughs> He's very stressed. Now, oh, Ruby's pointing out Pete squares don't have six sides, but hexagons, hexagons do. And we've got Woodwork Learner that's in the chat as well. Good afternoon, Andy. Hi, Andy. Well, a six sided hexagon is just too easy. A six sided square is harder. <laughs> and um, the Wood do saying, Brian, lots of piercing, texturing, colouring, and maybe a hint of gold leaf. I've got an impression he likes gold leaf. <laughs> he just loves it. He just he loves it. We don't like getting in a mess with it. So that one needs to go into about there somewhere. Yeah, that one can come in a bit further. Roger Kent is in. Well, I think I know what you mean there, Ben. Hold on. Let me just draw it. <clears throat> so there, we're getting there. I just need to take another tiny little bit off this edge. So we want this to start coming in the way. So basically all I've done is angle my tool this way. To start to bring this in. And so that's 10 mil there, Pete. Yeah. So that's continuing the, the shape on up. Well, that's what we're trying to do. So it needs to come in a little bit more. We'll just keep this line going in towards that. So I like that. Yeah. Ish. Right, I think this is what Ben was trying to describe. Uh, back to Mark again, hold on. I see you, Stephen. <sighs> Come on, guys. Back to Mark for a second. Oh. That horizontal finial. All right, so yeah. that's, like what, that's like one of those Japanese type lids. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Is that it, Ben? Is that what you're after? That involves turning another couple of pieces, doesn't it? Hey, see, Ruby? That's correct. Well, your hard work's it. paying off getting me drawing stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> she, does, she does give me homework, you know. Now take me off screen. Ah. Oh. Man alive. <laughs> I'm doing it, I'm doing it. There, are you happy now? Well, it's your show. I think me. Well, I don't know so much. Lewis has suggested to hold the bars on the lid with non marking tail stock to match up the edge, edge exactly. Could do, yeah. Could do. This is more fun. Yeah, I think um, 
think um because it's a fairly straight line i don't think you need to worry too much <coughs> no it just needs to come a little bit further i'll be grand not too fast i think that'll be just down near close there you go that's us one tiny little shaving more and we're grand There we go. That's perfect. In fight. You're not gonna believe this, guys, but that grain actually matches up. Just oh, exactly where I placed that there now. That's how it should. You parted it off. I can't believe that. All planned. Skill. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's that bit. So you want this bit to come back here again now? Yeah. If you're going you to go get... for that Hershey's kiss. Um... You need to get rid of this hey. a bit. Does it need to be as big as that, but? Um, One to scale. Then ask me to start drawing the scale. If you want to get uh, your fingers underneath it, because that's going to be the me mechanism for lifting it, it needs to be finger sized or fingertip sized. Yeah, but I need to be going much, take, take much more out of here, surely. Yeah. You're going too far in there. <laughs> no, I don't think I am. I need to come here, and then that's the edge I was working on. Yeah. But I need to go in first, and then come back out again, surely. Um. No. I'm not just going to make a, 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 a round there now, am I? Yeah. Yeah. Up to a point, am I? Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Uh, can I? Uh, um, yeah, okay. I'm going to have to look at that drawing again. Lewis says, make the amount of white on the lid the same width as the white rim on the farm. Who says anything there's going to be white? Well, it's uncoloured, isn't it, is what he's saying, I think. So that has to come in like that. Is that what you're telling me, guys? No. You don't have to put me on screen. Put, put the wood back right, on. Just look at, just look at the drawing. <laughs> but don't put me on screen. Brian. Okay. Okay. Ben says, don't worry, Brian. If all our ideas are rubbish, you can do it again off camera. That's probably that's probably uh, what may happen, but no matter. So there's a great matching up again there. So I not do you want me to? There you go. That's a better one. We need to rethink now, Brian, because what I wanted was from that. Uh... First you bit. want this to be you? Did you want this to be flatter out here? I wanted it to curve outwards and then back in again. Oh, yeah. Does that change? This, this bit here, <laughs> Brian. Does that change? That, that bit at the bottom. Yes. See. Ah. You so you didn't have the lines in the first place. Yeah, oh well, sorry. No. So you didn't show me the lines in the first place, so I was confused there. I thought I was actually bringing this in. And then now oh, you're gonna go out and then in. I, I thought this was coming in like this. No. And then come and then coming back out. No. Right. So have I got enough room left up here? No. 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 Design change. Um, Design change. Lewis says follow yes. Mark's diagram, turn that disc on top, then sand off opposite sides so it's top is rectangular. That's actually a good idea. I'm confused by that. Right, Someone. so if you just make that disc on the top, um, nice and square, use your mortise to take a slight cove or cove in the top. Have you still got the drawing, Mark? No. no. 
<laughs> keeps, um, it's on the whiteboard. He keeps wiping it off. <laughs> um, and then you put it on the sander and you sand off from either side. I have, I understand what you mean. Just make it square then on the top. Yeah. God, I'm not yeah. sure I like that idea. That... I'm not sure I like that idea. There you go. He's got it back on. What has he got back on down there? Aston said, it looks like he's heading towards a Russian doll. To which Todd has replied, Russian dolls oh. are just so full of themselves. <laughs> Stop yeah. dumping me that. I was just laughing. I, 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 I just shot, I just locked Mark out there, but I brought him back in again. So there's the picture again. See, I'm not sure I like that. No, not that one, the other one. Ben's idea. Ben's idea. Yeah. I thought that was Ben's idea. No. No, it wasn't. Oh, no. Oh, the, uh, the... something separate. So basically, yeah, I need to make this in. So basically, I just need to make this into a dome now. And the other bit, how do you, how do I make the other bit? The other bit is just... No, hang a on a minute. Don't one. make it into a dome. We're not doing a minaret anymore because you haven't got enough wood. That bit. That one, Brian. Don't bring oh, me yeah, back that in. One, yeah. yeah, I know. I see it. So, what you've got to do yeah, to get you, that you can't is that, turn yourself a nice parallel um, circle. A parallel circle? Yeah. What? So, what are you talking about now? A square <laughs> edge, parallel circle. And then, <laughs> put it on the mortise that you made on the inside, cove out the top, dish out the top, so you've got an inwards curve. Then you put your sanding disc on and you sand off both sides of that circle that you've cut. So you've got a square piece in the middle. So I'm... How much of a circle do you want here then? Leave that as exactly as it is. Don't touch that. Right. The bit behind that, towards the chuck. That's, that's bad. Yeah. Square that edge. Square this edge off now. Not very good at following instructions. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at that, actually. Right, so just square this here. Yep. Out of some time, we're well out of this instruction. I don't know. You deeper. It's complaining a little bit because I'm trying to take ten mil at a time. Yeah, have you got a thinner parting tool? Yes, I have. Might be easier on a smaller one. I do, somewhere. Where have I set it? Hey, Pete, what do you... Oh, there it is. It's in a tool rack where it should be. Ben, I suggested if you flip it on the chuck, you, um, you can get the original shape you were going for, minus the grain alignment, of course. Yeah, but we're not doing that anymore. We're doing the other one. Right, so that's that. Take that in another uh, five mil. There you go. All the way down to here. Uh, yeah. Right, now curve, right. That, curve that edge in to match that bottom corner. Curve this edge here then? Yep. Down to match that. To... So a curve from here all the way down to there? Yep. Brian? Yes, mate. Lewis has sent me a photo of a drawing oh, no. he's done. Oh, I know. Let's have a look at that then. I'm not sure you can see it very well. It's on my phone. Yeah, but we'll have a we'll have a go, Mark. We'll try and see it. Uh huh. Ah. Uh, All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, got it. Got it. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Lewis. The idea. Yep. Thanks, Lewis.
So this just needs to come down in a nice curve. Is lids by committee really aren't ever really a very good idea, ever. Really. Yeah, no, but we're just on a bit of fun. It's already it's, right, it's fun. It's just a bit of fun here. Right, so there we go. That's that shape. Okay. Now, well, if you re reverse that onto the other on. chuck. So that's coming on there now. It could actually be a bit thinner. It could go thinner on that. Bit, so, so this bit here that you have went in here, that's going to be a stock. Yeah. Yeah. So it could go in further. And then this bit but... is going to be Yeah, and I think I'll take that in a little bit further. Just to continue that shape on it. Yes, I'd, yes, I I'd, yeah. I'd be you tempted to make that curve go in a bit flatter. Yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do, Mark. But I'm going to do what Louis, Louis suggested in the first place. I'm going to stick that on there. You could even put a cove onto that uh, flat spot you got there on the inside. Well, ring center. Dan Adams has just joined. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Oh, yeah, welcome Dan. to the Mad House. <laughs> that's the wrong one. I want a cone center in there. That cone center has a very deep MT2 table. Just squeeze that up a little bit. Uh. <laughs> well, now I can follow that curve on in there. Isn't that what Lou suggested half an hour ago? Yeah. Lou says, Brian, feel free to tell me to take a hike at any time. Wouldn't do that, Lou. He always feels free to say take a hike, but he still does as he's sold a lot of the time. So that's more like the, the, the curve now. Yeah, that's quite now, good. If I, if I, I have just had a bit of a thought there. Because this is going to be too big now, I think. If I just took that to there and made that bit the little stem, yeah, and, and then this bit, cove that this, then, don't you? then this bit will be the yeah. the pencil -y bit that sits in the top because that's what it looks like really is a pencil, isn't it? Yeah, but it's got a curve on it. Yeah, right. I'll just take that in a bit more there now. I think take this bit in. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more. And then sweep that curve in just a little tiny bit more, I think. A bit steeper though. Yeah. So I'm just go take that in straight there. That's enough. Yeah. A bit further. Needs to go a bit further, I think. No, step it. So you. Each cut now going in a bit further. So in there, and then step that in a bit. To there, and then come to there and do a third one. And step it in a little bit further. Like that. Yeah, now massive steps going outwards, I would say. I'm going to make this a di just a disc now and then hollow that out and that's going to be the little bit that sits on the top. Re disregard all this. Yeah, we can do that, yeah. Or we could step it out. I, I, would, um, I would be <laughs> stepping out to where that is and I'd be... Taking that just down a little bit, the outside diameter distance, a little bit smaller, and using that as the top. 
That's yeah. right here. Yeah, okay. that's the bit I would be using as a flat top. Okay, so let me just step that out then. So if we make that the same as that one, yeah, make it a little bit narrow. Match them up. Oops. Lucy yeah. suggests that. we use the wide diameter brown. Yeah. I'll go do that now, Lewis, because I'll get across both of them with the same same tool. And then do the same wanna, again. Do you want to put that curve onto the onto bottom this part? first one? Yeah. Yeah. Get that established. I'll do that now. Do that next. Just get this bit done. Fair bit to go there yet. So they two are level. And they two are level. Now bring this curve on down into here. Michael McEwen's in. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Tiny little shear cut just there, just to blend that in. There we go. I should do. Right now, on that uh, wise disc that you got there now, decide the length of the flat part you're going to have. And decide how, how, how far out I want it to come. Yeah. I'm not going to mislike this bit now. And it's good that you got the two together because that makes it easier to decide. I would be inclined to grab yourself a, a ruler or a pencil and just mm -hmm. hold it along the length. No, other way around, 90 degrees around. Thanks. This way? Yeah. Hold it along the length so you can see where that flat handle is going to match the sides of the, the pot beneath it. Oh, here you mean. Now, I'd be inclined. If you go... Make it the same size as the, the, the top here. No, i go a bit further down than that. I would no, say... See, I think it needs to be, yeah, almost where the fattest part of the bottom is. Yeah. Or here. Yeah. Use oh, a ruler. Sense. Well, that's that's the full size of it. That's that, you, that's a full that's a full size because that's I never took anything off that. When I cut the outside of it, it's the same size as that. It's four inches across. Yeah. If I put a ruler on that, you'll see. Yeah. There's not nothing taken off that at all. Right, I would come in. Apart from about sanding. I would come in one eighth of an inch. So you're just below that um, wide point. One eighth of an inch. Right yeah, there. so you're just inside that that widest point, basically. Yeah. So it, it does taper in a bit then. Doug Miller's in. I just said that. Hi, Doug. Did you? Oh, I'm, I'm in the world then. Keep up. Are you sure? You said my I you can always cut it down if it's not right, but... Uh, Now I'll be reversing it in the chuck. I can do that now. You've got to be careful on this because remember it's a spindle orientation and you're on a mortise. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, light cuts, it'll be fine. He says laughingly. I don't need that. 
We need not take this chuck off. Unscrew that because the dopey spanner at the record power send is not worth tuppence. No sets you, know you could sell really land for these as patterns. There's a little chuck, there it is. Little chuck on. Dopey little chuck key. This is the hateful chuck key. Make a certain mark there just to make sure that's in the middle. Have. Just loosen that for a second. And tighten it again. Don't over tighten it because you're pushing against the fibres now. <coughs> you can leave right, the tail what stuck. You're, what you're doing now is you're hollowing that top edge. This so in here. That curve when you when you flatten it. Camera. So so how? All oh, right. So oh yeah. I, yeah, tail stock end, you're holding that so you've got a curve in the piece when you flatten the, the edges. Change camera, bud. Um, do not want it on there because I'm going to hollow out here. I, mean, I think we need to see overhead so we can. Now you've turned it around so we can see what you're doing, that's it. Not too sure I like this bit. No, you can still. You've got the tail stock in place, you can still change that bit if you want. Yeah. I just need to extend the colour a bit because I can't get close enough in there. In fact, I should we just be turning this away now without the tail stock, probably. Don't go too thin on that uh, middle bit because obviously you're using that to drive so what you're what, cutting. <coughs> so, what you're asking me now to do is just hollow this out in the inside. Yep. I'm going to have to take tail stock away at some stage, aren't I? Oh, yeah. Lewis is suggesting to curve those ledges to match the piece. I tend to agree. I don't think they look right to step. Cut, cut. Uh, that's no, no, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's bit, curve. Yeah. Curve yeah, those, you turn it into a curve. You haven't, you haven't got any steps on Can the top. I, I haven't. Right. I haven't. I just leave a little bit in, in there to support that. Yeah, don't jam the point straight in like that. Well, that was an accident. It was an accident. I didn't do it in purpose. So I'm just kind of bike hollow and that is all I'm doing. Yeah, because it is in green. This little spindle guy doesn't really like being Hung over the end of the tool rest. Sure doesn't. Nah, I'd be going for a bigger one myself. Maybe even a small bowl gouge. How much of a bend do I want on this? You've got to imagine it flat, that bend sh showing. Uh, it's going to go to there, just so you can see how far in it is. Uh, it's probably not far off. I think it's pretty good, actually. I'll just take this cut here. Oh, 
Right, before you take the middle out. Thanks, Sus. I would be looking at that. And I, I did say when you started that to do it as a cove, and um, you, you ignored me. But I yes, think yeah. it needs to be a cove. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's not, not bitter at all. He's not bitter or twisted a bit. No, not really. Lewis yeah. has said the same, so, you know. Change camera. Oh, again. Yeah. And take this down and make this a bit of a cove too. Yeah, take the steps out completely, just cove the whole thing. Remember the Lovely. middle the middle of that cove is the width of your final handle, so. Well, I don't want it much smaller than that. No, I wouldn't go much smaller. Although, although the lid is not a tight fit, mm -hmm. so. I would, I, yeah, I would. Yeah, more delicate. I, I th I'm thinking thinner, Mark. Yeah. I'll just try to get this nicely rounded over here so that it nicely rolls over there. When you get to, I'll tell you when, about there, you want to dive down in so it's flatter across the top. Yeah. So that the stem comes out of the middle more. More of a gothic. That's better. Flatter still. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's better. Telephone, Joe. Uh, I'll ignore it. Can you tell I'm concentrating? Yeah. So are we. I was holding my breath. I wasn't. I was laughing. I mean, um... <laughs> <laughs> Ravenscroft. <laughs> right, so this this now has to be the same shape. I need to cove that that way, do I? Yeah. This, this bit. Yeah. Try and follow that inner curve. Keep your, keep your uh, edge fairly square. Lewis says the well, width of the it. finished top will be determined by the cone under it. And that is very large right now. Oh. So they need to go further in here then. Yeah. Is this handle going to come up the way or down the way? Up the way. Up the way. Um, we're turning by Barry is having to go. He needs some sleep. I think. I think uh, you take care, Barry. Lewis is correct. This needs, to, this needs to go in a bit more. It does, yeah, it needs to be a bit thinner. Make that a lot of sound there. Try not to have a flat cove on the bottom. I'm trying not to. I'm 
Try to get this to blend back out again now. That's better. It could be a, bit, a little bit thinner, so I'll just keep no, that's taking it a now. little bit more. And just a does little that, bit there. Does that curve to the outside match the uh, bowl that you've got on the end? No, it needs to go deeper yet in here. When I've when I finished, I've got to finish the inside yet. But is this not too thick? No, not yet, because you're gonna you're gonna dish it some more, so you're gonna need some width to dish the outside, the bottom bit. That's bit. Yeah. So you're gonna have to come up that flat and then start to curve it from there a bit. Um, Andy, um, Brian's turning a lid. Uh, to go on the vessel that he turned on Monday evening. Well, I'd be like, I'd be tempted to use a small bowl couch for that. Actually, kind of okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but with a bowl couch, a with a bowl couch, you get more of a bowl bevel. It's the same bevel, Mark. Shorter. Like that's it's in three sixteenths of an inch. It's the same angle, but it's a shorter bevel. Ben said it would be useful for the rest of us if you could draw the design you're trying to make in the sawdust mess on the floor. What sawdust mess? It might be nice to just leave a little fillet just above there. Yeah. Just there. Oops. I think the sandal's going the wrong way. Finish that fillet with a spindle gauge. Okay, so now you've nearly completely got rid of the fillet. <laughs> No, I haven't. No, I haven't. That was no, really I nice. No, I haven't. It was too big. <laughs> yeah, actually, it wasn't. Yeah, actually, it was. Have no fear. There we go. Ben said, I'm going to spray my jewels red. It looks well cool. It does. What tools red? Jewels. Jewels. Oh, yeah. right. Chuck. Right. So I need to make this now. Does this have to go any thinner? No. I do think you need to just curve. You know, where, see where the straight edge is? Yeah. Or here? No. Yeah. That transition That transition to the bottom needs to be more curved. You need to bring that curve round. Uh, yeah, but you need to keep a bit of straight there to work on. That's better. That's all it needs. Just that. Yeah. There yeah, there's a little flat bit there. Right, while you still got the tail stop, I'd be inclined to sand and finish everything below it. So you're only doing the, the, the last bit. 
Inside, yeah. Inside when you... Surely. It's not going to take a lot of sanding, guys. It was pretty well cut, I have to say. Yeah, it should be straight as 240, shouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> Get you. 240. <laughs> Yeah, Lewis has said it'll get thinned from the top now. So as you hollow out the inside, that'll thin down the... I thin from here. Yeah. Just trying to sand that a little bit in there is the hardest bit. Yeah, you're going to lose most of that, but there will be two. Yeah, there will be inside. two. Yeah. I know. So I'll not be too fussy with it. <laughs> Maybe I should have put my extractor on, eh? Right. That was 240. I think I'll do for sanding. <laughs> Lewis said, yep. I bet Brian wished my internet was dropping today. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I got sand to seal this now. Because that bit is going to stay natural. Yeah. That's at least this bottom bit. This other bit may may get coloured or something. So just up to the fillet with the sanding sealer. Nicely burnished, and we'll just use a little bit of Hampshire sheen on that, just to finish it off. <clears throat> a little bit of Hampshire sheen. Doug Miller said, saw a fellow last night who had different jewels on the different chucks. He painted the jewels all different colours. He then made go no-go gauges for each jewel set and painted them same colour as the jewels. That's, That's a good, good idea. Yeah, it is, eh? That's what Glenn Lucas does. Glenn has yeah. all his tools, red, uh, red, green, and blue. And when Color you go to the shop, jigs. when you go to the sharpening station, um, all the jigs are red, green, and blue. So you can't get mixed up unless you're color blind. Right, so that's that bit. We're done there. So now this bit. Change camera. Removing that, changing camera to there. And now we have to take this off somehow. So do I want this to be the, the inside? This to be the same shape as the outside now. Yeah. Hmm. You got some gifts in. Good afternoon, boy. Hi, Glenn. Hello, Glenn. I got a cup of coffee. 
Thanks, Johnny. Well, at least I was um, far too good to you. I've got a cup of coffee. So my problem here is I'm having household. difficulty envisioning what this looks like once I've shaved the sides off it. It's dead. Right. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Don't get a catch. Wrong tool. Wrong tool. Still the wrong tool. Try a different one. This is a little bit heavier, so it should work better. Just so as you know, Glenn, I expect you were watching, but he teased us with a sanding sealer, but he didn't reach for the Yorkshire grip. Brian. Yes, mate. Right, so... Okay, yeah, I've got it. Yep. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, got, okay. Yep, got the idea now, yep. Lewis says that if you cut the bowl thin, then sands off the two opposite sides to leave a rectangular curve, it would look cool. That makes sense? Yes. Ruby suggests you change the angle of your tool rest. Because it's the wrong way around, Ruby. It should be that way around, not right, Ruby. And then Lewis has also said, Check your truck, because it bounced. Well, it's still cutting through, so I'm just going to leave it. And it's still producing quite nice shavings there, so I'm just going to work away until it stops doing that, and then I'll sharpen this gouge again. Seriously tempted to do a push cut into the middle. Well, if you do, I'd use a bowl gouge to do it. Small one. I've been trying not to. You won't get a very good finish. No, I'm actually getting a really nice, some really nice little shavings off of the way it's going, so I'm just going to stick with it. Amy's saying she's still not feeling grand. Let's Sorry, get... Amy. You feel better That's soon, not good, man. Amy. I hope you feel better soon, babes. Chocolate. Lots of chocolate's the answer. Doesn't like that much, does it? Yeah, it's getting a bit thin now, isn't it? Just, I think I need to get thinner than here. I don't think you want it too thin. You want this handle to be noticeable. Okay. Let me just finish that. It's going to be, I want to get gonna a nice be the width of your right top of your so, fillet. That's about here. No, the, the handle, oh, yeah. when you've squared it off, you can be the width of your, t your fillet. So, you know, the, the th thickness of it needs to kind of blend in with that. So don't go too thin. Yeah, we're getting about there, man. I would suggest we're about there. <laughs> Ruby's saying, don't you have a thickness gauge, Brian? Yeah, there is. Yes, I do have a thickness case, Mark. The Ruby was asking, not me. Oh, Ru Ruby was asking. So. I do, Ruby. I have one of these, Ruby. I have this. So 
to that is that thick. And the wall of that is that thick. That's about right then. So it's just slightly smaller than the, the spindle. Right, so finish that inside. You're only going to have the square line of it, but you might as well finish it while you can spin it. True. Oops. Let's use one of these. And one of these. So I'll use a lot of one edge desk on this. Just like doing the inside of a bowl. Yep. Remember that figure of eight that uh, Graham was telling you what talking about? Mm hmm. It's probably very appropriate because that's an ingrained dish there. It might actually be easier if I just put that in a drill. There was to miss out a word from that line. He said, design credit to Ben and insist by the artist known as Beckett. It should be formally known as Beckett. <clears throat> Yeah. I don't think his fellow uh, Bristol um, graffiti artist has got much to worry about, has he? Banksy. Uh, <laughs> Banksy. Right. Oh, Banksy's pushing it a bit now. He's, uh, he's not climbing the buildings like he used to. I met Banksy. Got on my bus once. Two in the morning. Bag of paints. Right. <clears throat> Lewis has made the good point that you need to sand it parallel to the growth rings. So there. Yeah. So I'm sanding it across this way. Yeah. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sand that. What camera you use on? I'm going to sand that across there like. Yeah. And like that. That's it. Something like that. So all okay. that's going to come away and all that's going to come away. Yeah. Yep. Well. Personally, I would, I, I would be using a pull saw to get the, um, the bulk of it out and finish it on the sander. But. So if I get the grain running up and down the way and pop that on it like that and that's about the right thickness it's about the same thickness as the stem Yeah And now I have to try and cut that off somehow so if you've got a pull saw, I would be inclined to use well, that. Could I, could, could could not possibly, use one of these? Could possibly one of those, a hand saw. What, what, what about one of these little? Yeah, that'll do it. What about this little guy? Yeah. Lock your spindle first. Yep. Lock your spindle. Don't go too close. Just sand, sand it to finish it. Yep. So if I just take a cut across there... Whoops. 
Let me get my tool, my tail stock out of the way. I'm just I'm quite a way away, but I'm just wanting to try that. And Lewis has said use a tail stock to mark the lines, which is a very good idea. If you turn it on the breeze, you'll be exactly the same position on the opposite side. One mouth. Yeah, perhaps you need to sharpen them teeth. Perhaps. It is burning a little bit. Just know what you think. <laughs> yeah, so you know, that's why the extractor's on. I think I think the last time we used this blade it was on plasterboard, so maybe that's what's done it. I'll do it. <laughs> I would be just a little concerned about having the extractor on. Because if that sucks up an ember. So if, if there's a fire it's next door. Yeah, there's a fire in the house next door. I'll just I'll just put the extinguisher on. Right, I need to sand that, do I? Yeah. I take that off and do it with my belt sander. Uh yeah, or put a sanding disc yeah. on the way, whichever. I haven't got a big sanding disc. Belt sander it is then. I'll go over to the belt the sander. You missed the opportunity, you should have maybe ordered one. Yeah, no. I've already spent enough today. <laughs> uh, Lewis says, leave it in the chuck. Oh, leave it in the chuck? Okay. Yeah, good idea. Oh, good idea to hold it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is Barry's, here, Lewis. Barry's Wood Creations is having to go. See you later, Barry. Right, hold on. Hi, Barry. Barry. What? What and did actually, you do can't set fire to your um, dust collector because Baz isn't in. I had to hit that there because I can't find my... Spend a lot. Right, over to the... Uh... So, let's put a can bit you... of extraction on it first. Can you turn that just... camera... The other camera, the one behind you. Oh, you've done it. Okay. I could maybe do that instead. So plug my Hoover in here. Can you see that? No. Go back a bit. No. Yep. There you go. Hoover goes in there. Switch the Hoover on. This is really noisy, guys. Nah, it's not noisy. Nah, it's not bad.
I just pressed the button. Oh no, I didn't. Reset of the belt. The belt just wandered off the one side there. Sorry, I wish you had a cut more of it. It does look as though you yeah. um, have been skimping on the uh, sanding belts. Oh, come on. Stop, stop wandering off belt. Doug Miller just coming to the noise counselling is working great. It certainly is. His job was pretty good. I don't like the curve at all. That's right, you can do it again. Lewis has said you can still shape the curve and the thickness. I can. And Ruby said, great coaching, everyone. Sorry, Brian wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I might have added a bit to that one. What did, what did Ruby say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit more off this side, yeah. Right, so I hate the curve on it, first and foremost. This curve is not right. No, that should match flat. that curve. Well, I did too say that. There. I did say they had to match. Yeah, I know. But, you know, didn't listen to me. You know, what are you going to do? Well, I kind of did listen, Pete. I just didn't get it. <laughs> Just didn't understand the whole concept. Yeah, I mean, you, you can still. The thing is, a lot of air, but you can still. You can still shape it. You can still shape I, it. I wouldn't. I would be inclined to take that as your model, and then do another one using the techniques that you've got there. 
to achieve it. So it's about thick too, I think. Yep. I would say you probably, if you were going for right, you probably want it a quarter of an inch wide, a quarter of an yep. inch thick. Yep. Just a bit size of would, pencil. If, I, I would say you, that those ends need to be square, not not curved. Aye, they're curved Before here. Before you do anything else, take it off the chuck and just put it on the box so you can see yeah. it upright mm. in its normal orientation. Yeah. That's the better way to look at it. It is. Because you're looking at it on the lathe. I know. I know. I still don't like it, though. <laughs> well, we, we don't care what you like. Yeah. <laughs> well, well this, is, this is true, of course. This is true. <laughs> Let me set that board there. Set that there. Chris Dodd says you've definitely earned a thumbs up. It has the, it has the right idea, but the, the execution was poor, I think. I'm fine. Yeah, well, uh, committee is quite difficult. But... Well, I've never done one of these one of these kit type type handles before, and it actually doesn't look that bad when it's on the. See. But it definitely needs to be smaller. So yeah, that bottom curve, more if that bottom curve follows the top curve, curve. Find. Then... Would it have been better if Would it have been better if that had come down the way? No. To match this curve no, here, because though. you you mean uh. A sad face rather than a smiley face. Yeah, well, I don't like sad faces, so uh, it's not going to be that. Yeah, you see. Yeah. Good point, Joe. Good point. Mm. No, I think you know it's, it's a but, pretty good. But, um, the lid's good. It matches in with the, the, the little band there. Yeah, the bottom part of that lid is spot on. Yeah. I think you need to go down to a quarter of an inch on that cove to where That's the fillet good. is. That's a grain orientated as well. And down here to a quarter of an inch. Yeah, down to a quarter yep. of an inch. And then the, the the dish needs to be a quarter of an inch thick. That's right. And the top and bottom curve need to match. And, yeah, so and that just needs to be a bit of a edges need to be kept square. Right, this end needs to be square here. Yeah. If you, kept, if you kept them square, you could, you could even then possibly you cut, cut them. Cut, cut it across there, even make it square that way. Yeah. This is not this is not beyond saving, but. Um, oh yeah, you can still save it. You could save it, it's, but it's I would keep, I would keep that as it is, and start again with another piece. Oh, I don't know if I want using to the it concepts. Again. I think I like it. I think I'll try and finish this. But not today, because it's half past two now. Yeah. That was interesting. Just needs thinned out top to bottom. You're right, Lewis, it does. It needs to be thinner this way. It needs to be a little bit thinner this way. And a little bit thinner in that direction too. Yeah. So if I, if I took that down to about that thick, somewhere about there, and did the same all the way across, So got a bit of a speed wobble on there. So somewhere about that thick. But that means I need to reduce the size of this as well. Yeah. And then now, I can I'd be inclined to go for a flatter curve, top yeah. and bottom, but a, but a matching curve. Okay. Hmm. Lewis is saying he may have typed 316th a couple of times. Oh, 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 okay. Oops. <laughs> right, I'm going to play with this this afternoon and see how we can make that work. But that's the idea. The, co the concept is right now. I just need to refine it a bit. We're done. Let me bring you guys back in again. <laughs> what are you going to say, Mark? No, I said what, uh, it was a good learning curve. I enjoyed that. It's something I've never done before. So uh, I've learned something today. I hope you guys out in the chat have learned something. If 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 only not listen to your earworms. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you should listen to your earworms. I'm not sure which is which there. <laughs> but anyway, oh wrong camera. That no, camera. you do extremely well at trying to trying to sort of replicate what we're talking about. Um, it's uh, yeah. It's, 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 I enjoyed the process. It was good fun, guys. I hope you enjoyed it too. <laughs>
Yeah, Ben's idea in the beginning, I think, was it Ben's idea? Ben's idea. Yeah, was. Was, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Ben, for the idea. Thanks to you, uh, Pete and Mark, for the input to keep it right. Mm -hmm. And Joe's artistic input. Oh, there's the, the drawings. And uh, Lewis, who provided a lot of the technical detail. Uh, and Lewis for the uh, input. I really like that little bob, though. I really like that little bob in that. It's, yeah, that's nice. It came out really well, that. See, I was right to put a mortise in there, weren't I? Oh, absolutely, Pete. Yep. Always handy. I'm going go, go to need it now to try and do some of this. I'm going to do, I'm going to do some of this. I'm going to try and do some. Of and if it doesn't work, we'll uh, we'll just figure it out. Right. Yep. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll catch you. Oh, who's before on? we go, for right. those who are watching yesterday. Oh yeah. That's what's oh. that's what's left of the piece. Hold on. You want to show them it? I don't. I don't want to move it. <laughs> just leave it there. Leave it there in the background. Look, there I'll it let is. You see it, but there it's there. It, it exploded yeah. as Mark was tidying up the top edge. It just kind of. See, I like the way it's yeah. turned out. I think uh, it's got a lot more interest yeah. now than it did when you were turning it. It's just a standard hollow point. It has a lot of potential, I have to say. Just needs to do careful handling now. Yep. Yeah. A little bit of careful handling now, and maybe a little bit of colour and stuff. And, uh, a little bit of fat then, and we have got to be spot on. Excellent. Well done, Mark. Like just, like just, just, just the same as I'm going to have to do this a little bit of fettling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Right, guys, we're done. I'm going to press the button. Who's on? Who's on next? What day is this? Thursday. Scott, Scott's on tonight. Wayne's on tomorrow lunchtime. Steve's on tomorrow night. Correct. Jamie and Jake are on Saturday afternoon, oh, and then. Okay. Wayne's on uh, tomorrow night uh, to have uh, Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Yep. And we're we'll back to Sunday with Steve again, and then, well, back to Monday again. But we'll see you all uh, in some of the next one's lives, and uh, have a good weekend, guys. Talk to you all later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Cheers, Bye.